So when I'm when I'm dancing, I feel that when I'm improving, it, it's a very big escape. So it gives me the opportunity to let loose, to really escape from reality, and allowing me to forget about everything. Hi, my name is Alphonse Napolitano. I'm a uh, sophomore dance education major at Montclair. I started dancing when I was six years old. I started with my sister, so my sister was originally a dancer. Like, my mom would bring us to the studio together, and like, I would sit and like, watch and stuff. So then it kind of like, came down to the point where like, if I'm gonna be there, why not like, put me in a class? I was diagnosed with sensory neurological hearing deficit when I was six. So we have all of these different pitches and frequencies of sound, but once we hit a certain moment, my ear won't register. My ear won't register it. It, you can keep, the, set, the pitches can keep getting higher and higher, and then someone else will keep hearing it, but I'll cut off at a moment. I started wearing hearing aids uh, all through elementary school, all through middle school. With that came a lot of static, and then just, I stopped using it in high school. My grades went up, actually, when I, when I stopped using my hearing aids and everything. I started lip reading a lot. So I lip read really well. This, in this past show, we, I just did a piece called To Have and To Hold, and it was choreographed by Shapiro and Smith, and it takes place on three benches. And it's about, it was inspired by the AIDS epidemic, and it was choreographed in 1989, and it's really about six dancers as they embark on a journey of love joy, hope, sorrow, and acceptance of death. So it, it's a, it was an emotional roller coaster, I can tell you that right now. It was, the piece itself is 17-ish minutes, and it's, the piece itself is an emotional roller coaster, and then learning the whole entire thing was also an emotional roller coaster. But I still have marks from the benches that won't ever go away because there are now scars that I have. That dance changed me as a person, it changed me as a dancer. It really, it really opened my eyes to human connection. Uh, I'm Kathleen Kelly, I'm an assistant professor of dance here at Montclair. Um, I met Alphonse uh, when he came his freshman year last year. Um, and I taught him his entire first freshman year in modern. I didn't notice at first uh, that he had any disability at all. The first time I really noticed was we were doing something with our eyes closed and he didn't know when to start because he would take cues off of uh, my gestures instead of um, the other students taking cues off my voice. Hi, I'm Emily Ingersoll. I'm a BFA dance major at Montclair State University, and I've been dancing since I was about three years old. Uh, I've known Alphonse Napolitano for about two years, and he's my dance partner and my best friend. Being really open with someone is really, really helpful and something that I learned when I was working with him. And then I think that I also learned that he's a very, very passionate person in life and also as a dancer, and that really comes through. Um, when you watch him perform, you just, you have no idea that like, anything, his hearing, you just, you don't know that anything's wrong because he just doesn't let it stop him, which is amazing to watch and really inspirational. People out there that want to be dancers and for dancers out there that have a disability, all I can say is, is, is that if you work hard enough and put enough dedication into it and you will definitely not have a problem. You will rise up to be the person that you want to be. I was bullied through all of middle school and a little bit of high school as well. So like, I didn't care, I pushed through that, I persevered through that, and it made me a stronger person in the end. So whether, whether you're afraid of society or whether you have a disability or whatever, whatever it is, 
you work hard enough and it will pay off. It will pay off.